Hi, this is Eric Dickerson, NFL Hall of Famer, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Thursday, March 4th, the Fantasy Footballers back with you. Jason Moore, Mike Wright. I'm Andy Holloway. Always a pleasure to join you two gentlemen around this fine table. Mm, yes. To discuss the finer points of fantasy football, ever sophisticated, a nobleman's game. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, we have a coaching changes episode for you today. We've been promising this episode for a while, so we are. So here it is. So here it is. Yeah, stop asking about it. Delivered. And that'll do it. So uh, you want to hit the outro there, Al, and we'll be. We'll Some be coaches out. changed. Yeah, I mean, it happens every year. Just think about last year. It's the same thing. All right, there it is. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> No, this will be fun. We're going to break down the coaching changes uh, that have taken place this offseason in the NFL. And we'll talk a little bit about what happened last year and uh, reflect on the changes and what that meant for fantasy football. We've got some news to talk about, some buy sell. You guys doing well today? I'm doing Mike's fantastic. Mike's got the hair covered up. Oh, it, but I don't know if you saw the breaking news. I announced it to the world. Oh, you oh. getting a haircut? This Friday. Oh, really? <gasps> I'm getting a haircut. Well, Gentlemen, all right. I'll Gentlemen, be. adjust your schedule. Adjust your ranks accordingly. If you have been on this uh, wild ride of growing hair out with me, prepare to and cut it And you get off. that cut at Lowe's, right, with the hedge trimmers? Like you, you go to the Lowe's? Where else would you get your hair okay. cut? <laughs> okay. He's got some <laughs> thick hair. <laughs> Uh, well, that's that's big news, Mike. That's really headline stuff. I I probably should have opened the show with that. Right. It is also your birthday. Now, here's the great news. Oh, that's true. When yes. they're listening, when this show comes out, mm -hmm. super not your birthday. It will not be your birthday. So, ask yourself, Accurate. listener, did you wish Mike a happy birthday yesterday? Oh this, man, you should have. If you didn't, guess who just got muted? <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh. Your birthday, Mike. I know nobody's birthday could be as important as Jason's. He makes the biggest deal well, of his a, own he birthday. It's a full week, yeah. yeah I mean, but is true. it? I mean, is it a big? At this age, is it a big deal for you? It's it's a day. Yeah, it's a day of my birth. I don't know. I'm I'm sure I'll eat something of my own choosing tonight. Okay. So that's pretty sweet. Yeah. Do you and just I'm gonna tell the kids to suck it up? You spend the whole day like waiting for a surprise to happen, expecting a sur surprise party. From people around you? Yes. Only to be disappointed? Yes. Okay. <laughs> YouTube.com slash the fantasy footballers. If you want to watch the show, you can subscribe over there. Click the bell. Let's uh get into some buy sell. Ooh. Buy or sell presented by Pristine Auction. I completely forgot a huge announcement at the top of the show. Oh, my man. So I'm going to pause the buy sell for just a moment because uh, we have been. Well, we can we can buy or sell uh, this person actually getting the listener league spot. Uh, buy. I'm going I'm to buy it. <laughs> we, we had the very special listener league giveaway that was associated with pre-ordering the ultimate draft kit before March 1st. And as promised, we're giving away a spot and we've done so via random number generator. Yes. And the lucky winner is Dalton C. Oh, congrats. Oh, we got a, what's this? The studio audience loves it. Dalton, congratulations. 
They're not envious or jealous. The studio audience, they're very the Foot Clan are very yeah. supportive people. Yes. They're 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 disappointed, but they're happy for Dalton. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and there are more spots than just Dalton's spot. Otherwise, he would he would win the league by default. Just him alone. <laughs> uh, but no, we uh, very excited to uh, award that first listener league spot to Dalton, and there will be more to come. And there are still, uh, it is still the lowest price possible at ultimatedraftkit.com. And there are still some pre sale benefits over there. So please check that out. We are still way ahead of the season. But the, you know, the UDK Plus has the Dynasty Pass. So if mm. you play in a Dynasty League, you want that advantage and you can get in there right now. And now we can do some buy sell. Do I hit the drop again? What's the rule there? I think you. A double drop? I, I, look, I'm lost. I don't know. I don't, I don't know, know how to doing. get into it without a drop. Yeah, this is kind of for us. Buy or Sell, presented by Pristine Auction. All right, Buy or Sell, Ryan Tannehill as a top 10 fantasy quarterback in 2021. Believe it or not, quarterback seven. (laughs) He was the quarterback seven in 2020. He had seven rushing touchdowns, uh, including five of them in the final three games. Oh, man, that jaunt in the Green Bay game? Yeah. That was Uh, absurd. Led the NFL in fourth quarter comebacks, game-winning drives. Uh, I mean... He's good. He's a good player. I don't know. why, Why can't players rewrite their story? More I effectively, think, I know he's. I think tr- he has. You think he has? Well, I, I, he is. He is doing it right now. Yes. Okay, but Mike, when I say Ryan Tannehill or Justin Herbert, how do you think about that? Who's a Ooh. better player? Yeah. Who's who? Do you want? That is interesting for my fantasy team. Yeah, or or real life. Oh, real life! I would take big big herbs because because he's young and he's going into his second year and he just set the 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 rookie record for passing touchdowns. So I'm looking at longevity of career, but for fantasy purposes, I think I would. I'm going to go with Tannehill. Now Tannehill has concerns. He lost his OC because you know, Arthur has a plan, yeah. and that plan will be enacted down in Atlanta. Uh, is Derrick Henry still there? Yeah. yeah. Okay, the play actually is still going to work. Mm-hmm. That's All correct. right, I'll take Ryan Tannehill in the top ten. Okay, so you're buying, Jason? I think the line is really good. There's about eight quarterbacks that I would for sure put ahead of him. And then he's right there at that like 9, 10, 11, 12 spot. I love Ryan Tannehill for fantasy. I think he's going to have a fantastic season next year, even without uh, Arthur there. But I'm going to sell here. I I expect Jalen Hurts um, and okay. whoever the Saints quarterback uh, to be ahead of him, I would put... Uh, Justin Herbert ahead of him, and I think that will push him outside of the top ten. But this is why we, you know, we love late round quarterback drafting. Nobody's going to be drafting Ryan Tannehill high. I will be thrilled to have him be my fantasy quarterback in twenty twenty one. But I will sell the top ten finish. He he did overproduce in touchdowns. So if he gets any, uh, if he gets hit with any of that regression. That's just the Titans. And the Titans have done that two years in a row of just See when it's when Ryan Tannehill does it, it's called overproducing. When when Mahomes does it, it's called producing. Well, yes, there is that's the that's the funny part about But I'm saying you you highlighting the seven rushing touchdowns, a career high in passing touchdowns. When you hit your career high, you have overproduced. Is AJ Brown still there? Yeah, I believe he's still there. Is Corey Davis still there? No. Don't know. Mm, Probably don't not. Know. Mm. The real one? Yeah. No, I'm oh, don't. Is, is Adam Humphrey still there? <laughs> oh, he was he there last year? <laughs> <laughs> All right. That was uh, oh, I didn't even Yeah, what's your answer? It's I'm a gonna, tough one. Uh I'm gonna buy. All right. I'm gonna buy that he he makes it inside the top ten. Think that's, what a world. I'm buying and you're selling. I know. I've always been the uh, Ryan Tannehill guy. But, uh, you know, it's funny. We we make these jokes. Is this guy there? Is this guy? But Jonu Smith could be gone. Corey uh, Davis could be gone. This this it, it could be worse next season for, for Tannehill and the Titans. That's fair. All right. That was Buy or Sell from Pristine Auction. Uh, right now they have a golden oh, ticket auction. Oh, got a ticket. Today through March 11th. Starts at $20. No reserves. Um hundred random items from the auction will come with a golden ticket. The golden ticket will have a code for a pristine auction gift card up to $150. Uh, 
Go to pristineauction.com, use the code BALLERS. You'll get a $10 credit just for using that code. Oh, man. And then you'll have a chance at a golden ticket. I'm going to go hold a ticket. Uh, <laughs> all right, let's talk news. News and notes from around the league. You must be really hyped for this this uh, Kyle Rudolph news. Is that the news that we have, basically? Yeah, really. That's about, You're saying about because it. he gets his own segment? No, we got, we got two pieces of news. All right. Uh, it is, it's big news. Kyle Rudolph said, hey, I want the ball more. I'm your yeah. guy. Yeah, if, if you didn't follow the, uh, the negotiations of the Minnesota Vikings and Kyle Rudolph, this is what allegedly happened, that the Vikings called him in and said, hey, we're going to need you to – restructure your contracts. Yeah, we got to bring your salary down. We got to bring your cap hit down. And he said, no, I'm not going to do that. And you know what I, I actually want is the ball more. I want more targets. And now the Minnesota Vikings said, you're free to find those targets. But, but they won't a, be here. With a different team. So now, naturally, I've already seen it. Big Irv. Big Irv. Irv Smith. Year three. No Kyle Rudolph. He, Will he be appropriately hyped, overhyped heading into the new year? I mean, we, we, we're treading on dangerous waters right now. Yeah, I mean, he will get a lot of hype. He will be one of those early, late round tight ends, if that makes sense. Yes. Um, and I think he should be. He's got the opportunity, the talent, the skill set. Um, will he go too early in drafts? I don't think he'll go too early. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, 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 I'm, no, I'm hitting you with that one. <laughs> it's March. <laughs> I think he will be an appropriate pick because all tight ends suck. And so what you want is a chance that you get a breakout season. It, w whenever you find the Mark Andrews, will or he the be Darren the Joni, the Jonu hype from last year? Maybe, but that was, I, I, I mean, that was fine. If you took a shot on Jonu and he started the, the season strong, and then it turned out he was like anyone else you were going to draft there. You've got to take your shot on these guys. And and he has had the talent. He sh he showed that last year he got into a stretch where he was a reliable starter, and that was with Rudolph there. Um, yeah, I, I I think he'll be uh, one of my he's one of my favorites. Yeah, I think he will he will give you games. I mean, he's going to give you games next year. It'll be a matter of are you content with your tight end being the fourth option on a team because he'll he, he'll be the fourth option behind. Right. The two wideouts and Cook. And Except for the one game where we were all really relying on Dalvin Cook to get those uh, yeah. touchdowns. No. And they just kept stealing them. Here's a man who, who had a different conversation with his general manager. David Johnson. Uh, restructured his contract to stay with Houston in 2021. It's a one-year deal. $4.25 million guaranteed. If he had not restructured, he could have been cut. Mm -hmm. If he had played under the existing contract, he only had about $2 million guaranteed. So this was a way to get more guaranteed money and help the cap situation of Houston, who just let go of Duke Johnson. Yeah, it's it's worth noting uh, there were, there was a tweet from Diana Rossini from uh, ESPN talking about she was texting with an NFL head coach and talking about how next week's going to be an absolute. Uh, what were her words? Yeah. Um, I believe massacre. A massacre next week around the league with all the cuts. You've got the cap situation doing something that is different than the normal expectation in the, the last several decades of the NFL because of the revenue from this last season. So you're going to have a lot of cap casualty cuts uh, coming up, just like you saw with Kyle Rudolph. All right. Any other news that we need to get into? Free agency preview predictions next week. No? 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 Well, well I mean, I was just going to add on to the, the David Johnson. We, we highlighted that. and I, Did we talk about him in the truth? I don't know. We've, we've talked about him, just how, yeah, he only played 12 games, but he was actually – he was – competent mm -hmm. for fantasy he was on a pace for you know over 900 rushing yards eight touchdowns and 44 receptions is Deshaun Watson going to be his quarterback that remains to be seen yeah that's going to change the single season outlook of David yes and, and the head coach that brought him in that traded DeAndre Hopkins for him is no longer there as well right so there was uh, a decision to be made David Johnson could have hit the open market could have tried to find a guaranteed deal doing something there but this is his chance to stay a starter yeah, well, I, and I don't Duke think he would have Duke Johnson found is that. out of the way. Yeah. So that's that is helpful. All those touches that Duke Johnson was taking away, they were more than zero. Uh, I believe what David Johnson played 13 games last year, missed a couple 12. of 12. 12. Okay. Yeah. 
missed with a concussion and, and another injury. Okay, let's uh you wanna move move on? Let's do it. Let's do it. Coaching Carousel. Another year in the books. Another year where I'm not offered a head coaching position, not even an offensive coordinator position for a professional team. It's kind of ridiculous, but you know, here we are. How many years have to go by until that happens? From here, I would say 16. Okay. 16 more? 16 additional years. And then I will be offered a like head an coaching. Ass- assistant to the okay. quarterback coach. One can hope. Or, or water boy. Yeah. Um, well, look, I, I, I did play flag football. You, you did. You have so, some qualifications. Now, at quarterback. <laughs> oh. I was a real coach on the field, as they say. <laughs> All right. Last year, 2020, there were five new head coaches, 12 new offensive coordinators. This year, 2021, there are seven new head coaches and 13 new offensive coordinators. If you look at last year's uh, head coaching changes, Carolina, they had a new head coach, Matt Rule. He went 5-11 and 11 after Ron Rivera went 5-7 and seven in 12 games the previous year. Murder. <laughs> Kevin Stefanski, one of the new additions, won Coach of the Year, 11-5 yeah. and five after Freddie Kitchens uh, was given the boot. Mike McCarthy replacing Jason Garrett. Garrett was 8-8. Eight and eight. McCarthy was 6-10. and ten. Hmm. Uh, One of them had Dak Prescott for the whole year. Joe Judge replaced Pat Shermer. Two-game increase in the win column, 6-10. I thought they played well. I thought Joe Judge did a good job uh, considering he lost Saquon early in the year. He lost Daniel Jones. To where? Injury. Sort of. I know. And to himself. Yeah, that's what I thought you were uh, saying. Pat Shermer was 4-12 the year before. And then Ron Rivera, 7-9 and nine in Washington, replacing Jay Gruden and, uh, you know, made the playoffs. Uh, yeah, division winner, Ron Rivera. Yeah. And so that's what happened last year. Uh, what were your takeaways from, I guess – when we looked at these changes heading into the year. Like Kevin Stefanski is the one that sticks out, and you say, okay, you knew he was coming from the Dalvin Cook, Minnesota system. You knew running the football was going to be the new identity of the team. We questioned things about Baker Mayfield's productivity potential, but you had Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt as valuable fantasy options all year long. Any other takeaways from you know, what you remember conjecturing about these, these guys last offseason? One of the takeaways that I have from this last off season was that the uh, I know we're, we're bringing up the head coaches, but the offensive coordinator changes where it was just an OC that came in to fill a void, and sometimes that's because of a promotion, sometimes that's because of a uh, of a firing, but they pretty much all stayed the same last year. When it was just the OC changing, uh, if they were bad, they stayed bad. If they were decent, they stayed decent. Um, and you know I. Uh, I, I'm going to keep that in mind as we look uh, at this year's offensive coordinator changes because especially this year, it seems like the vast majority of the teams that just had an OC change were like in-house. We're just going to try to keep the same system. We don't want to uh, you know, break what's working. And I, I expect next year to be um, – the, the, the feathers won't be ruffled too much with the OC changes. Well, and I think one important thing to keep in mind is the coaching change is a piece of the offensive puzzle, but you want to see if these coaches with certain identities follow through with that identity in the NFL draft in free agency. For example, Kevin Stefanski, you saw their offensive line become a priority instantaneously when he became the head coach, and when they brought in – you know, free agents, and they were the number one ranked offensive line last year. Um, and it made a humongous difference. They went from 12th in rushing yards per game to third. So you want to see you, – you can have an identity someplace, but if you don't have the personnel in your new place, mm-hmm. it's not going to work. Which is an excellent transition to talking about Atlanta. Uh, the Atlanta Falcons have brought in Arthur Smith. Arthur! Oh. Let's see if his plan works out. Arthur, coming off of uh, some very successful years in Tennessee, uh, uh, 12th in yards in 2019, second in 2020. And is this Derrick Henry? Like, is Arthur Smith the product of Derrick Henry, or was the Derrick Henry success 
partially to you're crediting Arthur Smith. Atlanta is certainly hoping that Arthur was the guy. But what's interesting for me is, will which direction does Arthur go? Does he try to find his Derrick Henry? Like, how aggressive will the Atlanta Falcons be trying to get the centerpiece of the offense? Because if it, it, it should be a running back like it was in Tennessee. They don't have one on the roster right now. Yeah, play action works when you. It's not Edo Smith. That's the. Uh, it works threat. a lot better. Yeah, yes, works better. So that is one of the questions: is, Was he riding the coattails of Derrick Henry coming into this situation? And I think you're right. This is an identity, and will the team fulfill that uh, need for a running back in the draft? Well, you're. I mean, there is not going to be a Derrick Henry out there you know Derrick Henry is an outlier of a player sure the question is you know did you you can argue that Arthur Blank or Arthur Arthur Blank Arthur Smith here tailored an offense to what he had in uh, Derrick Henry uh, Ryan Tannehill right we we're talking about his efficiency how good he was um, and you can credit some of that to Arthur Smith Arthur Smith was a long time with uh, the Tennessee Titans, started, I think, on the defensive side of the ball, it was just about everywhere, tight ends, kind of bounced around, um, and he's still young. He's 38 years old. Uh, so whether or not – I've seen some people believe that he is a, a coach that tailors his system to the players he has, and that's what you want. That's what the press conference insinuated, um, but it's yet to be seen, and I have a really hard – difficult time crediting him with the success that Derrick Henry brought to the Tennessee Titans. Well, and, and with Atlanta specifically, you have an offense that you wonder how much is left in the tank for Matt Ryan and Julio specifically. We love Calvin Ridley. Matt Ryan's been productive, but it's been a, a you know, part and parcel with being a very, very high pass attempt team, fourth in the league last year, fifth in passing yards, fourth in pace of play. 27th in rushing yards. So rushing was not part of their identity because their personnel didn't suit it necessarily. And, and the team, you know, they were going to go with what worked. So that's something that we're going to watch. And they got Dave Ragone now as the offensive coordinator. Dirk Cutter is out. I'm very excited, though, for all the play action that Matt Ryan will be running. Uh, you, you look, uh, if, if you're on Twitter. He's great at that. Yes. And if you're in, on Twitter at all and joining in sports Twitter and seeing the debates, I mean, the data on play action is it it's very strong. Like, why are these teams not running play action more? Uh, so I'm excited to, that Matt Ryan will be able to do that. Uh, who's going to – will Julio Jones just take over that A.J. Brown type of uh, role in the offense? I mean, Julio is already great, but maybe, maybe we get a few more – Actual like bomb touchdowns for our man Julio Touchdown Jones. Yeah, when the the pitch uh, video that they send out for play action, it, it's all Tennessee Titan highlights. Right, that's the truth. I do, I do think they're going to need to significantly upgrade their running back in the draft. That's obviously a, a, a key for them, and they're going to look to do that. But I I look at Arthur Smith, his uh you know two years kind of running the offense in Tennessee, and Ragone coming from Chicago, and I view them as lambs to the slaughter over the next two years really I do I, I, mm. I and I know I'm more alone on that I people that I respect absolutely love Arthur Smith think he's going to be brilliant and change things I, I think he'll be gone in two years I'd like that he has had tremendous success I mean he maybe it wasn't him maybe it was mostly Derrick Henry that we'll find that out but at least he has that on his resume I mean there's some do you remember there's it, some guys that got a head coaching position where you look at the resume and go oh what <laughs> Yeah, and, and why not Andy? Yeah, and yeah I, exactly. <laughs> right, and I I don't want to I I don't want to connect these two at I don't want to connect them at all. But, but you're gonna do it. I'm you're not doing gonna, it right now. No, no, no. I'm disconnecting <laughs> them, but showing an example, a, an example over on the other shelf, totally disconnected from this shelf. Different shelf. Is, yes, which is Adam Gase had some great success on his resume because of Peyton Manning. So it, sure. uh, that's the scare. Is like. Was it was it really was, was it you really Arthur Smith? Was Probably it not. All right. Before we move on to the next team, where we are going to raise the testosterone levels of this show oh. tremendously. That's good news. Uh, <laughs> that is good news for Andy. Uh, Let's get high tea on this show. Want to thank today's sponsor, Simply Safe. If you have thirty minutes, you never have to worry about a break in again at home. This is how quick and easy it is to set up your security system with Simply Safe. 
You can do it while you're uh, you're getting a Netflix binge on, you're watching a game, or you're listening to a certain podcast. Mm-hmm. This one. Look, you this this podcast is over thirty minutes. You should be you could be setting up your Simply Safe security system and securing your home. It's incredibly easy. Go to simplysafe.com slash footballers. You can choose the sensors that you need, or you can get some help from the experts. It's easy to assume everyone in the house already feels safe, but they might not. So check it out. Grab a Simply Safe security system. They have been protecting our uh, our studio for years. We have never worried about it. We've we've had a couple of noise incidents. Bro- Brooks still has all his Fabergé Oh, eggs. And, and Brooks has never lost a single piece of his wealth. No. Because he is secured by Simply Safe. And you can go to simplysafe.com slash footballers today to customize your system and get a free security camera. You also get a 60-day uh, risk-free trial. There is nothing to lose. Simplysafe.com slash footballers. We truly love Simply Safe. All right. Moving on to Detroit. <clears throat> Did you say lamb to the slaughter? Yeah. It, 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 bringing Arthur Smith to Detroit to be eaten alive uh, by the new head coach, Dan Campbell, <laughs> Guns Mahoney. There, no, there, I mean, there's going to be some biting involved. Kneecaps. Yeah, Dan Campbell's replacing Matt Patricia in Detroit. Anthony Lynn, former head coach of the Los Angeles Chargers, re- uh, replacing Daryl Bevel. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Your silence is deafening. My silence is trying to find the storyline to lead with with Dan Campbell coming into this position on a team that seems committed to rebuilding. Matthew Stafford is not their quarterback anymore. We, we we haven't been able to say that in a really long time. Anthony Lynn is no longer a head coach. He's an offensive coordinator. He's going to be a piece of a, a, a new identity here in Detroit. And I guess I'm asking you, what is the true identity of this new team, this true alpha Dan Campbell taking over? <laughs> It's it's easy. It's really like no no joking. It is easy to identify what their identity will be. They've talked about it and they've hired coaches to back it up. They want to be a tough, you know, hard nose, hard nose, no hard soft nose, um, uh, man's man of a team. You look at who they, they've got: Deuce Staley, Anthony Lynn, Mark Brunel, Antoine Randall, L. Dan Kip. They're hiring players to come out here it's you know these guys work hard and but the problem is that hard work that fighting that man's man that's going to be difficult to work without the talent on the roster to take that next step up you know it 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 doesn't strike me as schemers this doesn't strike me as a group of um you know chess playing uh, ma- you know, matchup you. creating yeah, uh, offensive systems here. This strikes me as we're going to want to hit them in the face harder than they hit us and be stronger and, you know, that, is, that is type. Is that going to work with the, the Beach Boy running the offense? I, I don't know. I, I will say this to Dan Campbell's credit. Now, they signed him to a longer-term deal. They know that it's a longer-term project. Yes. This was somebody that Sean Payton trusted. To be his assistant head coach, to be a uh, tight end coach on his team, to come into an office that we consider to be innovative and an offense that is on the forward thinking edge of the NFL side of things. So, you know, that that's a credit to Dan Campbell coming from that pedigree, somebody well respected, somebody that, look, when you don't have the personnel, you need a coach like this sometimes. Certainly. Because you can get, you know, this is a team that I think will compete. But Maybe what, more than people think. Well, we know about this; these types of systems. When you have a coach that's like that, in a, I mean, we're we're having fun over we're turning Dan Campbell into a caricature, which he's he's not because he, we also you know in that what got lost in his comment of saying we're going to be biting kneecaps was also him talking about how well we're going to get DeAndre Swift involved in the slot because we're going to be we're going to utilize our pass catching running back. So positive things for fantasy football. But the this very high T approach, when you're losing, it does not work. And you know, like it's uh, you're it was like Joe Judge up in New York. I have my concerns for Joe Joe Judge long term. If he doesn't get it going this year, the players are going to turn on Joe Judge for for with the old school approach. And and if you look at the talent that 
Detroit does have. They were solid on the offensive line. They were 13th ranked offensive line. They have DeAndre Swift. He's a talented player. Mm -hmm. They have Anthony Lynn. What can he do? He can run the football. So if you look at that and then you contrast it with the hist history of Detroit, which is we can't run the football, that will be the thing you have to see change. They were 30th in rush attempts, 30th in rushing yards last year. So, um, Sure, move DeAndre Swift into the slot. Also, line him up and hand him the football. Uh, try to stay competitive in these games. That's the angle that I'm looking at. That's the area of confidence that I would have with Anthony Lynn. You're going to, you know, you're not going to ask Jared Goff to win every game for you, or any. especially when you have or any every or any, <laughs> especially when you probably won't have Kenny Galladay. You're not going to have Marvin Jones. T.J. Hawkinson won't carry your offense. It, this is a running football team. That's the direction we're heading. Mm -hmm. Compete. Keep it close. Win the turnover battle. Bite but, some kneecaps. But now we're down fourteen. Now we're down eighteen. Now right. we're down twenty-one. <laughs> we want to keep running the ball. I, I. Oh, is that the old Hugh we, Jackson Cleveland offense? How where, did we get from fourteen to eighteen? I, well, you know they couple scored safeties. a couple safeties. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, no, it does remind me a little bit of like you can have an identity. You want to run the football. You. You want to be able to do that, but when you're down 21 points, what do you do then? Hugh Jackson wanted to run the football in Cleveland. That's all I'm saying. I'm I'm trying. Who was the, his running back that we? Uh, uh, Crowell. Crowell. Isaiah yeah. Crowell. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of Sean Payton's coaching tree. You know, we Sean Payton is as respected as it gets. When I think of the best coaches, the best minds in the NFL, you know, Andy Reid, Sean mm -hmm. Payton. Uh, you know, Shanahan McVay, uh, you know, are maybe uh, in that Bill conversation. Bill Belichick is still a good coach, Jason. Sure, sure, sure. I'm talking about offensive minds uh, okay. specifically. Um, Bill Belichick, unbelievable. But like the coaching tree from Sean Payton, I'm scratching my head to like, I can't think of anybody that's come from that. Um, and now I don't know if the Dan Campbell would be considered that. He obviously was a an interim head coach in the past mm -hmm. um, when Guns Mahoney was all the rage. Yes. But I will say this to, to wrap this up. <laughs> His biceps and arms, they're amazing. And so Dan Campbell deserves that credit. Just to put a bow on it. Just to put a bow well, on it. Well, they're, they're playing actually to get the salary cap under control. He is. They are arm wrestling for contracts. Oh, they're not going to give out a lot of contracts. No. Well, I'm saying you, you get a raise if you beat him in uh, arm wrestling. Okay. If you're not going to win a lot of games, your coach will be really strong. That's one of the fundamental pieces <laughs> of the NFL. Uh, Jacksonville, new head coach, new offensive coordinator. Urban Meyer, welcome. Doug Marone, farewell. Daryl Bevel, hey, how you doing? Jay Gruden, peace out. Um, the carousel is truly ridiculous. In Jacksonville? No, just of, of coaches in the NFL. Oh, Daryl Bevel, is, he's going everywhere. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, we, we just talked about where he had a job. Yeah. And he was released. Oh, don't worry. You got a new job. Not to mention, I mean, obviously, we know he's from Seattle. Spent six years in Seattle as their offensive coordinator. Mm -hmm. Spent time in, with Minnesota. Um, Urban Meyer. Okay. Comes it, from the college game. It should. It, it, if nothing else, it's going to be really fun to watch the Jacksonville Jaguars and figure out what can Urban Meyer do in the in the pros. I mean, he is one of the most successful coaches in college history. 187 and 32. Oh my and different gosh, uh, different organizations, Florida yeah. and Ohio State to created two monstrous juggernauts. Yeah, and um you know, needs to draft the right quarterback at the 101, which should be Trevor Lawrence and needs to implement an offense that you know, he, he's been a spread guy. Um, you know, does this mean good things for LaVisca? A talented athlete. Are the athletes in this offense going to have more of an opportunity to be put into good positions? And what does it mean for James Robinson, somebody that was so sure. productive for fantasy players last year that everybody's kind of like afraid to believe in going into year two? And rightly so. Uh, but Daryl Bevel, run the football. Yeah, we, which – which Bevel's going to show up? Seattle Bevel or Detroit yeah, Bevel? Because in Seattle, I mean, they were top five rushing offense year after year. I mean, and that's that was the the beast mode years. That was the Marshawn Lynch uh, years. Then in Detroit, you know, a top ten passing attack the last couple of years with 
with Stafford. So, which should that's a credit to Bevel, of, yeah, that, of morphing to the players around him. I, I was I was going to say that that seems like if you're telling me that you are such a run heavy coordinator and you're working for Pete Carroll, if we've seen anything this off season, it's Pete Carroll's DNA that he wants to run the ball. So when when Daryl Bevel's there, right, he does might have been he, more he, of Carroll's influence, ex exactly, and he succeeded with that. And then you know he was a good uh, you know passing game coordinator uh, mm -hmm. with Stafford. So I think it's tailoring to the personnel. The The issue, I think, for the 2021 season for fantasy football is will the personnel be good enough in the rookie season? It strikes me similar to what we saw from the Carolina Panthers, right? Yeah. Kind of a complete ground-up rebuild. And they're long-term plans. And so you're going to have a rookie quarterback and a lot of changes, and they're going to be okay and show some flashes. But for the most part, Here's, Probably not be that great. Here's a reason to believe in James Robinson, assuming they don't add some uh, marquee free agent running back or draft another running back that's going to steal a bunch of touches. 30th. That's what Jacksonville ranked in points per game last year. 28th in total yards. 32nd in rushing attempts. 31st in rushing touchdowns. And he was very, very productive. If you have an offense that like, I think Carolina is the great comp, that shows some flashes, Shows some creativity. I, I have no doubt that Trevor Lawrence is going to be able to do some of that in this offense. Maybe it will mean good things even if the percentage of rush share that James Robinson has goes down inevitably, mm -hmm. right? Because he had everything. He had all the carries on the 32nd ranked rushing attempt team. Sure. All right, Los Angeles, the Chargers. <sighs> Anthony Lynn, he is elsewhere. They have a new head coach, Brandon Staley. They have a new offensive coordinator, Joe Lombardi. This is the scariest one by far to me. Of because of the promise we saw be, from Justin Herbert and be, company. There are I mean, there are a lot of pieces. You have you have a quarterback one, you have, in my opinion, a, a running back one in Austin Eckler, you have a wide receiver one in Keenan Allen. And Brandon Stale is a he is a defensive coach. So this is okay, we're gonna be leaning on Joe Lombardi, who yeah, he's been in the league a long time. He's had a shot. He's got that at, last name, bro. He's got the last name. He had a shot to be an OC in Detroit for two years. It didn't work. He had to go crawling back to being the quarterback's coach in New Orleans again. Which he's got 10 years worth of, of know, two yes. stints of being that That's a long. Position. That is a long time to just be a quarterback's coach. So this one, and I'm not saying that he can't succeed. I'm just saying that this is the most concerning where we have big-time fantasy players and we have a very unproven well, offensive mind coming in to be the leader of that offense. Let's let's put this into what happened last year, too. You have some things to lose here. I mean, he says he wants to be up-tempo. Well, you can't really get much better than they were last year. They were second in pace of play in all of football. So that's cool. Maybe you want to maintain that. Well, you could be number one. Andy. You could be number one. Number two is the first loser. Fifth in pass attempts, sixth in passing yards last year. Austin Eckler's injury probably contributed to that to a to a large degree. Sure, but um, a lot to lose here with Justin Herbert's potential if things don't go right. And you know, Anthony Lynn was an offensive minded coach. I would have really have preferred for the hiring to be exactly the opposite, where they get a nice offensive mind in there and maybe an unproven defensive coordinator. Because the truth is, and we've talked about this, you know, plenty in the season, a little bit in the off season, the Los Angeles Chargers on paper have one of the most talented defenses. They lost so many pieces to injury this past season that their defense was atrocious, which helped them become so, you know, they had to play fast. Mm -hmm. When you're down by a lot of points, you don't get to huddle up for, you know, 40 seconds. So I worry that Brandon Staley is a great hire for real football. And he's going to come in and take this great defense on paper and make them a really good defense and protect that and and, and slow it down. Slow, be able to. They don't want to slow down their offense, but when you're up, when you have a lead, you want this is fewer possessions. Right, exactly. You you want the opportunity to play slower and win the game. And I think they're going to do that. I think it's a, a good hire, a head coach. I'm not inspired by the offensive coordinator and so that's like a double whammy here where I will have some worries some you know the every team that is making a coaching change has a variable when you're drafting these offensive players mm -hmm. and this is a larger variable to me 
All right, the Jets, new head coach, new offensive coordinator. Oh, boy. They were not good last year. No. Uh, they hired Robert Saleh from the 49ers. Mike LaFleur comes in as the offensive coordinator. This was the worst offense. I mean, Adam Gaze, the stink remains. I mean, it takes a time. It, there will Power be washing. Fumigation. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, they're, they're really going to need to bring in the big guns. I mean, they may have to hang up some really, really big, those air fresheners from the car, like the Christmas trees. <laughs> All over the building. I know they're they have called a lot of septic people. They're pumping yeah. out mm -hmm. uh, all the tanks. So you know, the Ghostbusters are showing up. That's right. Uh, we go from number two. Thank you. We go from the the team I'm the most nervous about to the one I'm the most excited about. Like Robert Sala is, I people love him. I like his. He, and he is he's a defensive. Gosh darn it. He is a defensive minded dude. If he's in your division. You don't like him because he when when they make a play, the camera's going over to him, and you're like, "I ah, that guy, get him out of my face." But his 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 players love him. Uh, hearing Richard Sherman in particular speak about him is it, it's clear that the the players are going to love him. And Mike Lafleur, now this is a completely unproven guy, but this is a coach who is a disciple of the Shanahan system. He has spent his entire career. With Kyle Shanahan, I mean, he went. He was with him when the Falcons. He went over to San Francisco, and the Shanahan system for fantasy football is a delight. And the Jets have been uh, mock drafted that they would. They they are a team that will probably spend one of their higher picks, at least a day two pick, on a superstar running back. Which that's another injection of a of a rookie into into our fantasy lineups in the in a Shanahan system type of system which I mean I'm making an assumption that he's going to bring a Shanahan system I think it's a pretty good assumption yeah. that that a coach who's been in that uh, system his whole career so I am excited I'm very excited to see what happens for You think they the can Jets. improve on 32nd in points per game Mike or 29th in pace of play or 32nd in total yards I would wager that they could I mean, they, nowhere to go but up. And and the team is going to be framed completely different in your minds post-draft when they have a most likely a brand-new, exciting, young quarterback. Like you said, probably an exciting young running back to grow together, a head coach, and, and, and an exciting offense. And right? if they don't bring in a running back, then I'm very excited for my dynasty team because LaMichael P. Oh, Ryan. Oh, my gosh. Not happening. <laughs> Not happening. Um. Yeah. LaFleur. Come on, guys. <laughs> oh, whatever. You put Lamichael P. Ryan on the San Francisco 49ers, and you'd be excited about it if he is a starting running back. If he's a starting running back, yes. I just I'm saying that that is what's not happening. Yeah. Um. I can hope and dream. Lafleur. I I love the yeah, hire. You do. I I like young coaches that come up in uh, an offensive system that has been proven so far those usually hit and I don't think Salah is a great coach personally I think he is um he is Dan Quinn I mean he is the hyped great defense coming over but he had such good talent in San Francisco and he had such energy that you know built his name up and I would, I would say that this past year showed that he's a to me showed that he was a good coach. You talk about the Chargers losing pieces. Mm -hmm. San Francisco lost all of their stars, and they were still a competent. I mean, they they were fifth, not a good fifth, defense. Fifth in yards allowed. The, it, he went from second in yards in yes. yards allowed to fifth in yards allowed, and you lost all and you of lost your studs. all of your studs. I would say this last year was the evidence for me, and that's why I got the job. When the players went down, if you remember the, 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 the game flow this last season, the 49ers started the season as just you don't want to play against them. And when the, when the injuries happen, and, and obviously it's, you're going to be worse, but I don't think he did anything special. You targeted mm -hmm. the, the Niners at the end of the year. Um, but I, Dan Quinn was great for fantasy for the Falcons. <laughs> so I, I like this. All I care about yeah, is fantasy. Was. So this is good news is what I'm saying. All right, uh, let's go to Philadelphia. Nick Sirianni replacing Doug Peterson, Shane Steichen coming over from the Chargers as the offensive coordinator. This one is fun because we get to find out uh, who gets to take credit for Justin Herbert's success because Anthony Lynn has an offensive job. 
Shane Steichen has an offensive job. Fight! Maybe, yeah. Maybe it's Herbert, though. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> maybe they both stink. <laughs> so what... Wh- 29th in pace of play last year, Philadelphia. Needed a change. Carson Wentz is gone. 28th in passing yards. Um, young coach, 39 years old. Colts offensive coordinator from 2018 to 2020. How do you feel about this move? Or, or do you even know how to feel? I I I do like it. Um, I like it a lot. We've, we've talked uh, at length about... Um, our agreement or disagreement or just feelings on Jalen Hurts, but I like disagreement, right? Oh yeah, it wasn't enough. Op- I thought it was multiple choice. <laughs> well, we agree that he's going to be valuable for fantasy. We disagree on whether he is actually a good quarterback. Um, but what I True. think is good here is that you know, assuming that they go forward with Hurts, which is is my belief, they're bringing in someone to build a team around. Uh, you know, a, a new system similar to what we saw with the Ravens bringing in a new coordinator and building around Lamar Jackson. So I like this. I think this is good for the the Eagles, good for fantasy football. Um, and Sirianni has, you know, he's 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 been good wherever he's been. Now was that Philip Rivers? Was that you know the 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 uh, weapons he had? Sure, that plays a part. But I don't feel like he has ridden the coattails of absolute world-class excellence you know the Peyton Manning at the top the Derrick Henry being the best running back out there he he's just had good pieces and he's done a lot with them yeah I mean and, and to Steichen's credit you can say I mean look he certainly didn't hold Justin Herbert back they correct he was willing to take a young quarterback and put him in a position where he can drive the ball downfield and use the weapons that he has I anticipate that Philadelphia will do some things in this draft to make you slightly more encouraged about the personnel on the offensive side of the football beyond Miles Sanders and Jalen Hurts throwing to insert name here. Uh, And that will help as well because you want, if a new offensive coordinator comes in and a new head coach comes in and you're dealing with a young quarterback, you at least want, for fantasy purposes, somebody that's going to trust that guy to, you know, actually throw the football. And we saw that with Justin Herbert. We've seen it with more younger quarterbacks. So that evidence is good. Uh, we get to talk about Houston. Yeah. Mike has really looked forward to this for a (laughs) while. David Coley replacing Bill O'Brien, Romeo Cornell's, uh, little stint at the end of the year. Uh, David Coley, how how do you feel about David Coley, Mike? So (laughs) this show has spent some time piling on the Houston Texans. Uh, mostly b- because of all the gifts that they have given well, they, to, to to the Arizona Cardinals. I was gonna say they have uh, they piled on themselves. Yeah, really. they've they've run it up upon themselves, really. And we didn't make them do all that <laughs> stupid stuff. <laughs> Look, here's here's what I know about David Coley as David Coley the coach. Uh, I mean, he's Andy Reid loves him. We we know that. Uh, he spent some time. That's good. He he spent some time as the wide receiver coach in Kansas City with Andy Reid for four years. The wide receiver coach, David Coley, three of the four years, a non-wide receiver led the team in receiving, including the 2014 year where no wide receiver touchdowns happened for an entire year. He was the wide receiver coach. Where did he go after that? Well, then he went he was the quarterback coach in Buffalo for a couple years, including the Josh Allen 52.8 completion percentage year. Then where did he go? Oh, now he's the wide receiver coach and passing coordinator for the Baltimore Ravens. Where they finished, let me check my notes, 27th and last. Got to get that guy. What? Got to hire that guy immediately. What? Don't, I mean, that's what, maybe he's a good coach, but this resume, this uh, uh, sucks. <laughs> <laughs> this is not a good resume. Well, he finds himself at least. Do they these resumes? I don't know. Because what we look at and what the league looks at seem to be different sometimes. It, I mean, to his credit, you know, so he's had a he's had a tough run of success, <laughs> um, but he finds himself in a really good situation. <laughs> um, yeah, this, this is the part where we're not sure it. yet who their quarterback is going to be, mm-hmm. um, but we do know that they have no draft picks, yes. uh, or uh, they have some, but they don't have good ones, um, and they don't have a lot of talent on the team. So, I think he, I think his resume is about to take a turn. <laughs> I couldn't he's, do it. He's I, sixty-five years old. 
He's the oldest first time head coach in NFL history. What? Is that true? I believe that is true. I I will vet that to, Look, I'm, to make sure. And yeah, he's sixty five. And and once again, we want everyone to succeed. Like, is if David Coley succeeds, I'm happy for him. We're we're happy for him. We're happy that because there's if successful teams, successful for fantasy. But this is just I, I cannot fathom success. What, I, yeah, it, it's it's hard to see. You're gonna and, beat Tennessee, Indianapolis, and and a head coach is. I mean, the, their job is different for each team. Sometimes you are just the the manager of the team. You are you're keeping morale up. You're you're making sure that the personalities jive, and you're overseeing things. It's not really your scheme that is. It, you're not the X's and O's type of coach. But man, I I don't know how to spin this one, Houston. I am sorry, which leads me to the 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 greater point of the open invitation, which has been accepted by many of you on Twitter. Yeah, mm. welcome to, to join the Arizona Cardinals uh, fandom. You are well. You're the, the that invitation is not. It has not closed. That invitation remains open. All are welcome from Houston. All are welcome to eight and eight. It was nice. Eight and eight is just right where you want to be. <laughs> now they did. Um, <laughs> you see those graphics that they post, the memes, they're like, hey, if you weren't with us at eight and eight, yeah. don't be with us when we're eight, seven, and one. <laughs> um, they, they did retain the same offensive coordinator that they, that, they, that they moved to. So that is hopefully good, right? Yes, it is. Sure. I mean, it's... I'm trying to find a silver lining here, guys. Right. Before we close out the show, I want to talk about some of the offensive coordinator changes. Six out of seven of the new uh, the OC hires were from the same organization um, it, because it's worth just mentioning. Like it, Variables matter in fantasy. So if, if things change, you want to know, are they going to change? <laughs> or, right. You know, practically on the field. Marcus Brady is the new offensive coordinator in Indianapolis. Um, I'm going to ask some quick questions on these changes, and you guys give me your gut reaction or uh, what you've looked at. Do you expect the same from the Colts offense Thanks to Frank Reich. Yes. Okay. The Miami Dolphins, uh, they have new uh, co-offensive coordinators. All right. Um, who I, from what I understand, they're drawing straws each week on who will take the blame. Mm, okay. Because it's more of a blame thing. No. So Tua is starting. Uh, <laughs> oh, 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 man. Oh, maybe. brother. Um, is this too many cooks in the kitchen? Uh, what's going to happen with this offense? I know you guys are so excited about the thought of Aaron Jones going here. Um, they were they were not great pace of play wise with Chan Gailey, but he's out the door. Should have more personnel this year. The Dolphins, I I believe the Dolphins are building their team correct. Okay, in the in the, at least in the way that Mike Wright would handle building, which is double offensive coordinators. Uh, well, Eric uh, Studsville, not not George necessarily Godsey. that part, but just saying last year when it was like they have to spend their second round pick on a running back, and they said. No, 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 we don't. We're going to build the rest of the team because running backs don't matter. Uh, so I, I believe in the Miami Dolphins. I believe they will be contending for uh, the division. All right. The Vikings went from Kevin Stefanski to Gary Kubiak. Gary Kubiak's out the door. Oh, no. Well, Clint Kubiak's taken over 34 years old. Oh, whew, Coob, Good. Coobs to Coobs. Coobs to Coobs. I was worried about losing Kubiak. Nope. Mm -mm. You're fine. Uh, the Steelers, uh, Matt Canada, Matt Canada, the American, right? Yeah, I just <laughs> oh Matt, <laughs> as opposed to Steve America, the Canadian. Yes. Okay. Uh, new offensive coordinator in Pittsburgh. This should matter, right? I mean, we saw some weird things out of this offense last year. We saw this short passing game with with uh, Noodle Arm Big Ben. Mm -hmm. We saw James Conner fail. We what what in the world is going to happen with this offense this year? They needed a change here, and and look, the offensive coordinator is Big Ben Roethlisberger. It was, it still will be. He'll be the one really leading the charge and in charge. But when Randy Fickner took over, it was to put everything on the arm of Big Ben. If you remember when that happened, and uh, all the the arguing with the OC originally, and Big Ben really wanted to throw it more. I, I do think it will be a little bit more balanced. Um, now with uh the american okay <laughs> with with uh matt canada, canada the american Indiana, matt canada Indiana. the american yes. yes the 49ers um they didn't have an offensive coordinator they're adding mike mcdaniel as an offensive coordinator kyle shanahan more of the same 
We know what the offense is. That is correct. Who is the offensive coordinator for the Los Angeles Rams? Who cares? It's Sean McVay. <laughs> it's Kyle Shanahan. We good. All right, Brian Schottenheimer. He didn't want Brian Schottenheimer didn't want to run the ball enough. <laughs> what a world! <laughs> and we so Shane Waldron in. is coming into the. Uh, yeah, he's quoted as saying there is quote philosophical alignment with Pete Carroll. Okay. Okay. So I think we know what that means. Yeah, we do. Um, and then the Tennessee Titans, uh, Arthur, oh, he's out the door, and Todd Downing is taking over. I am not very concerned with the offense in Tennessee changing. It has worked. Um, you have a very stable situation at head coach. Are you concerned at all with the change from Arthur Smith to Todd Downing? I'm, I would not say overly concerned, but this is a – there's certainly a variable there okay. for me. All right. Um, free agency preview, predictions. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Not the wishing well. Right. Predictions. People were quick to remind me that the cap room situation in Philadelphia was not conducive to Chris Godwin arriving. It was a wishing well. Yeah. All right. Bron Broncos fans did not like me putting <laughs> Jameis Winston there, and I get that. It was wishing well. It was a wishing well. All right. But those episodes coming up next week, that'll do it for today's episode of the podcast. Thank you for supporting the show, subscribing, reviewing. Uh, we love doing this, and that is because of you, Foot Clan. So thank you so much. Indeed. And we will be back very, very soon. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.